Oh, Rosemary, if there is one magical herb that you're going to have in your garden, this is it. A lot of people think of rosemary as like a universal substitute. So if you don't have a certain herb in your magical working that you need, you can often use rosemary as a substitute. So today we're gonna to talk about rosemary and some different ways that it can be used. And we'll be walking around the magical herb garden here and uh, exploring the various types of rosemary as well as its properties. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you how to use rosemary in your magical work. I think I'm gonna to have to start calling this my herb farm because it is a third of an acre and I've been covering it with all these wonderful magical herbs. But right here next to me, I have found a very low growing ground cover type of, type of rosemary. And I wanted to show you the blue flower that is on there that blooms in the springtime. The bees just love it. This one's sort of finishing up its blooming right now, but this one grows low to the ground. And the blue flower is often associated with Venus. And I think it's for this reason, a lot of people would uh, associate it with weddings. And women used to carry bunches of rosemary and orange blossoms when they got married in Europe. So even though most of my herb farm here is uh, fairly wild, I have one little controlled area that I have fenced in where I have some special herbs growing that I want to keep track of. But I have also included rosemary. It's growing over here next to some lovely lavender. And it's the uh, branches on this rosemary are getting kind of long, so I'm going to be trimming it back to make a witchy craft project that I'm going to show you in a minute. But rosemary is native to the Mediterranean part of the world, or Southern Europe, North Africa, those areas where it's sunny and dry. And so rosemary doesn't like it if it's got really, really soaky, wet feet for a lot of the time. You do have to water it, especially when you first plant it. But you want to make sure that you don't kill it with water. That's one of the main reasons that people lose their rosemary, I think. And the other thing is that it does want sun. So if you live in a really cloudy uh area that doesn't get a whole lot of sun, you might need to grow rosemary in a sunny window, uh, but it does like to have a lot of space. Some people say that it can get to be as big as a, or as tall as a human, which I've never seen one that tall, but um, it, this one's certainly looking pretty healthy. They do get pretty big. So this one's only been here for maybe less than a year and it's already this big and I think I bought it in a four inch pot. So a sunny area it just loves and if you live in a place where it uh, freezes during the winter time you can grow rosemary because I grew it in North Texas but it was in a very protected area uh, near a wall that sheltered it somewhat and it was also next to a a concrete sidewalk. So I think that that reflected a lot of heat to it. And of course, in the summertime, it got a lot of warmth and sunshine there. So here's my lovely rosemary that's gonna be getting a haircut in a minute. Okay, for the branches, I'm gonna cut, you can see that they're branching right here, but I'm gonna cut a length about that long, which I would say is maybe about a foot. And I'm gonna cut five branches like that to make a lovely decoration for Veltina. 
So I'm going to start to show you some ways that you can use rosemary in your magical working. Okay, so let me back up a little bit here and tell you why I said at the very beginning of this video why rosemary is a universal substitute or almost a universal substitute herb in your magical working. It is associated with solar energy. I know I said Venus earlier, but I think a lot of people do get uh, a solar association from it. Um, so the sun, uh, it's been associated with protection and also with blessing. Uh, as I said, people would use it um, at, at marriages. Uh, you can use it in love spells. You can use it for cleansing. You can use it for banishing. I mean, there's just so many different things that it can be used for. Uh, one really great thing that you could do with rosemary is just to put a sprig in a jar with some um, probably purified filtered water. Uh, you could throw in a little crystal piece and some salt and shake it up and you've got a great rim spray for banishing negative energy. Uh, we oftentimes in circle will dip a longer branch of lavender in some salt and water that's been mixed together and use it to asperge and cleanse. Okay, so you can also use the essential oil to uh, serve a lot of the same purposes. But um, with that, you want to be sure that you are aware of how to use essential oils, whether uh, they can be used on children or pregnant women, and whether uh, they will make you sensitive to the sun if you have the oil on your skin. So there's a lot to know about working with essential oils. But if you want to use it, um, in a diffuser so that it's being diffused into the air or put it in a room spray, uh, rosemary oil should be fine too. So I grow my own rosemary, right? What if you can't? A lot of people are buying herbs online or you might be able to buy it at the grocery store. My advice to you would be to make sure you know where your herbs are coming from. How were they grown? Are they organic? Were they organically grown? Are they non-GMO? Uh, what was the uh, situation like uh, at the farm where they were raised? You know, how were the employees treated? Was it, uh, what was the situation? Because the plants are going to pick up on all the energy that has surrounded them. So if you can raise your own herbs, it's wonderful because you're going out and talking to them and giving them your energy and you're building a relationship with them. So um, that's my advice for any herbs that you're working with. If you can grow it yourself, just find out where it came from. Okay, um, so you can use these shorter branches for asperging. I had trimmed up five longer branches from my bush in my little garden over there and they're all about the same length. And they did have some little shoots coming off this side and I trimmed those off and I'm going to save those and I can use them for something else. Um, another great thing you can do because of the banishing effect that um, is associated with rosemary, you can stuff a little dream pillow with rosemary and it is supposed to banish nightmares. You could keep it near their bed or under their pillow and it's also great for helping you to remember things. So rosemary oil, a sprig of rosemary when you're studying for an exam or there's a situation where you have to remember a lot of things, you could have a little bit of the oil on a tissue and smell it every once in a while, especially if you're at work or at school. Um, you can carefully dab some of the oil behind your ear and also make sure you're not allergic to that oil. Some people have really intense allergies to these things. So 
check it out. Make sure it's going to be safe because you probably aren't going to be able to pass your exam if you're having an allergic reaction. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to be making um, a project here and it's going to be for the upcoming Sabbath of Beltana. I'm going to make a, a pentagram star out of it. So I'm going to start at the top and then I'm going to join the branches together. And I have uh, chosen to use some um, florist wire to join the pieces together. Oh, here it is right in my lap. <laughs> but you can use, um, if you want to use a glue gun, you could try that. Sometimes the glue gun doesn't stick. So I have some green florist wire. Um, I had this other really wonderful wire that um, I can't find, but there's a lot of different things that you could use. You could use some twine too, if you're really into using all natural stuff. That would probably work great. You just want to make sure it's small enough to uh, get it nice and tight. Okay, so I'm going to be joining these together to make a star. So I've started out with this. Here is, okay, there we go, like that. We're going to go top to the bottom right, over to the middle left, then across to the middle right, down to the bottom left, and then up to the top again, and you'll have your star shape. So let me see if I could just put it together like that. I don't want you to have to sit there and just watch me do all this. So here we've got our... And it's going to go crossing that way and then you can see how I'm going to be crisscrossing it and I'm going to put these three together and then I'll come back and show you the rest of it. Okay so you can see that I finished up this uh, pentagram and got my branches all together. You do have to work with it a little bit and uh, make some trimmings here and there. Uh, but I think it, it looks pretty nice. Uh, there is definitely a front and a back to this project. So you can see this is where uh, my wire is coming out that I joined it together with. I'm going to be cutting that off. And uh, I did also need to put some support wire where the branches crisscross. So Make sure you have probably at least 24 inches of the twine or the wire or whatever it is you're going to use to join the branches together. All right. And then I took a black cord and I just inserted it through the top here. And then I brought it up and I tied it. And then I decorated with a red, a red bow, a red ribbon for Beltana. I might put a little red rose up in there. This is really a great project to make if you want a decoration for any of the sabbats. Just choose your corresponding um, herbs and flowers that you want to decorate it with. And it's a pretty all-purpose craft, just like rosemary. So I hope you have fun exploring the wonderful world of rosemary. And until next time, just remember, it's all about the energy.